Another thing that happens as we age, we're not absorbing the vitamin D as well as we used to. So that's why even if you do get a lot of sun, which I get tons of sun since I'm playing pickleball and I've had lots of vacations, I walk twice a day, I still actually have to supplement to keep my levels higher. Hello, friends, and welcome to The Honeycast. I've got some sweet information to bring to you today about how you can support yourself in menopause and beyond with supplements. Now, a couple things. Number one, I am not a doctor and I am not telling you guys to run out and go take all of these supplements without checking with your provider first. That would be the best thing to do. Just going to bring you some education on best supplements that can help you with symptoms of menopause, as well as with weight loss, because these supplements are going to help support overall cellular health, insulin resistance, cortisol, adrenals, those kind of things. So how do you know you are maybe deficient in some of these? You can actually ask your doctor to test some of these supplements to see if you are low in, specifically something like vitamin D or even your magnesium or zinc or things like that. You can get a micronutrient test and ask your doctor to do that for you so you can see where you are with your micronutrients. Overall, these supplements can be helpful for your midlife season, but they are not going to offset a healthy lifestyle and healthy diet. You cannot out supplement your diet. So that's a very key part. I talk a lot about the best ways to eat for menopause and the best ways to exercise and how to care for your body. In this episode, I'm just going over the supplements that can be very helpful. And they have been helpful to me as well. So why is it that we are gaining weight in menopause? Women in menopause will gain around 10 pounds throughout menopause. That's an average And there's many reasons for that. One, it's because of declining sex hormones. Your estrogen affects glucose, your the way that your body metabolizes glucose, and it also affects muscle mass and maintaining and building muscle mass. So when we start losing our sex hormones, our metabolism shifts. So that is one reason why we begin to gain weight. Another reason is because of higher cortisol levels. As estrogen walks out the door, our cortisol levels tend to be higher. When we don't have estrogen anymore running the show, our adrenals will produce more cortisol and cortisol starts running the show. And too much cortisol can cause belly fat weight gain. And so we want to manage cortisol with our lifestyle, with our food, with sleep and with supplements. And so that higher cortisol level is sometimes the cause of the belly fat. The other reason is because we tend to become more insulin resistance resistant because of those things. And also it can be from past dieting and metabolic issues. Our, our metabolism is slowing down. Insulin resistance is something that most women are heading into, some a little bit quicker than others. And insulin resistance is going to keep you from lo- losing weight if not even gaining weight and gaining belly fat because estrogen walks out the door. Estrogen tells your body where to store fat. And so when we don't have estrogen anymore, you begin to store fat in the abdomen area. Some common signs of insulin resistance, they sound a lot like menopause, but these are some signs of insulin resistance. And these are, these are not all of them. These are some of them. Increased belly fat brain fog, low energy. After you eat, you feel very tired or you still feel hungry. Cravings for carbohydrate, dark skin patches under armpit, back of knees, neck, face sometimes, moodiness, vaginal dryness, even hot flashes can be from insulin resistance. So we really want to support our insulin to make it sensitive. And there are definitely ways that we can do that. And so when we're talking about supplements, like I said, these supplements need to be harmonized with healthy eating and healthy lifestyle. And the first supplement, or actually, I'm going to say this is not a supplement. It is a hormone and it's progesterone, bioidentical progesterone or micronized oral compounded progesterone can be a game changer for those of us in midlife. Progesterone helps fight estrogen dominance It helps us with our sleep. 
It helps us with insulin sensitivity and it helps to balance cortisol. And progesterone is your feel good hormone. And so taking progesterone in your perimenopause years and your menopause years can really help with these things. The second is a supplement and they are called adaptogens. Adaptogens go into your body and they really adapt to what your body needs. Most of these adaptogens that I'm going to suggest are supporting your adrenals. Remember, we're going to support the cortisol. We're going to support those adrenal glands that sometimes get really tired and overproduce cortisol. These adaptogens are maca, rhodiola, ashwagandha, holy basil, just to name a few. I prefer using what's called Mighty Maca, and that's because it has 42 superfoods. It's got your greens in there. It's got mushrooms in there, and um, it's been helpful for my menopausal journey. The next supplement would be the omega-3 fatty acids, and these are good for supporting inflammation. Inflammation is a key driver of insulin resistance, so we really want to reduce inflammation with our food. And we can reduce inflammation with the omega-3 fatty acids. They also support your brain, your heart, and your hormones. Next is vitamin D. Most of us are deficient in vitamin D. The optimal range for vitamin D is going to be from 60 to 80. And this is best if you are testing your vitamin D levels. Vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin, so it can build up, and that isn't good to have too much, but most of us are deficient. And another thing that happens as we age, we're not absorbing the vitamin D as well as we used to. So that's why even if you do get a lot of sun, which I get tons of sun since I'm playing pickleball and I've had lots of vacations, I walk twice a day, I still actually have to supplement to keep my levels higher. And the best type of vitamin D would be the D3K2 because that's going to be the most highly absorbable form. Next, cannot not talk about magnesium. Magnesium is responsible for over 300 different functions in the body. And it's crucial for your brain health, for your nervous system. And like I said, so many functions in your body. It can really be helpful for those of us needing help with sleep and even needing help with nervous system, calming down. Magnesium is fabulous. Vitamin B. Vitamin B, it, those are going to be helpful for those adrenals. It's going to help to fight fatigue and help you with your energy. When we get super stressed or even when we get stressed, we just go, we eat up these B vitamins and with low B vitamin, that causes lower cellular function and, and honestly, low energy levels. It can also cause a rise in homocysteine levels. So we really want to keep make sure we're getting the B vitamins. And the last one that I want to talk about is creatine. Creatine is a supplement that is widely studied. Every study is actually favorable for women taking creatine in midlife, mainly for muscle support and recovery, but also brain function and brain cognition. We definitely want to support that brain as we are aging. And creatine is a wonderful supplement to use to help support your muscle, your keeping your muscle, muscle recovery, and actually performance. I cannot leave here without saying these supplements are just that. They are supplementing your diet. So if you're curious what you need to be eating in your menopausal season, I'm going to give you a quick overview. It is trim healthy and it is making sure that we are eating real whole foods. We are eating anti-inflammatory foods. You are getting adequate doses of protein throughout the day. What's adequate? At least 25 grams breakfast, lunch. And yes, I like that much at snack if you do a snack and then dinner. You are rounding out your plates, you guys, with veggies. I cannot tell you how important those veggies are in menopause. They do so much for you that you don't even know what they do. They are so beneficial. You want to get those good vegetables. And you cannot forget your carbohydrates. You don't need to go on a low-carb diet. You want to be carb-mindful. You want to have at least two of your energizing meals a day, you've got to get those carbs in because you don't have the estrogen anymore. And so getting those good low glycemic carbohydrates, not the one in packages, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about sweet potatoes, carrots, brown rice, quinoa, 
those kind of foods, fruits, all of those are going to be your good carbohydrates. And so we're going to keep those in an E setting, which is going to be with adequate protein, which is going to be 25 grams of protein, five grams or less of fat. And you really need that fat as well. And about a palm size of your good carbohydrates. So eating what you're putting in your mouth is directly affecting how your cell cells function, how you feel, your blood sugar. And that's the other thing is we really want to make sure we're keeping our blood sugar regulated throughout the day. And we want to talk about exercise. Exercise is very important. And when we're talking about midlife and weight loss and reducing insulin resistance, the number one exercise for you, woman in midlife, would be resistance training or strength training. And yes, we do need some cardio, but the biggest needle mover exercise for all of the above would be your resistance and weight training. So if you, maybe you don't have your, your diet dialed in yet, maybe you start working on that. You get your diet dialed in. Maybe you add one or two of the supplements above consistently and get your body supported And then maybe you're doing everyday movement. Maybe you're getting a few walks in during the week. Maybe that's where you start and you get that going and you get that a good habit. And then you add one day a week of some strength training. And maybe you start out with trim healthy work-ins or maybe you start out with Pilates or some type of body weight exercise. And you do that for four or six weeks. And after you get a base of strength, you maybe add another day and then you begin lifting weights after that. So see, there is a progression. I don't suggest just jumping into weight training. If you never have done it or you haven't done it in a while, you definitely want to progressively train, but you definitely want to get that in. If your goal is to lose weight, to support your metabolism, to build muscle, to uh, feel good, to not grow frail, then the weight training definitely is the way to go.